My name is Chad Williams, and today we're going to do a linear mix effect models with multiple factors. This can also be considered a repeated measures multiple regression. So what we need first is data, and what we're going to have is two different factors with two different levels. So we're going to have one group of individuals doing four different things. So we're going to create a data frame, and we need scores. So we have four different conditions, which means we need four different distributions. So C equals, we're going to use the R norm function as we often do. So we have 50 people. Let's say the first mean is 100 uh, with a standard deviation of 20. And then we could do the same thing. So same 50 people, but the uh, second condition has a mean of 200 with a standard deviation of 20. R third distribution has a mean of let's say 500 uh, with standard deviation of 20 and then our last one has a mean of let's say 250 with a standard deviation of 20. That is our scores and that just looks like this which is 200 data points. Great. Next what we need is factor one and what we're going to do is we're going to use orthogonal coding here um, I'm not going to go into what that means, but it's important um, and you can look it up if you'd like. What we're going to do is we're going to repeat negative 1 a hundred times, and then we're going to repeat 1 a hundred times. And what that gives us is our first factor, which has the first hundred data points is level 1, and then the second hundred data points is level 2. And then we're going to do factor 2 which is very similar, but instead we're going to go repeat negative 1 50 times and then repeat 1 50 times, which gives us half the amount of data. And then we're going to repeat this whole thing twice. It's not really clear why. You'll see in a moment when we're looking at our actual data frame. But what we get is negative 1 for the first 50, positive 1 for the second 50, and so forth. Finally, what we need is our subject IDs. So we're gonna just put one to 50 because it'll loop. So it's gonna go through one to 50, but then we're gonna still have space in our data frame. So it's gonna start back over. So if we run all of this, what we get is this. We have our scores and our subject IDs, but then we have our factors. So the combination of these two factors tells us what condition we're looking at. So negative one and negative one is condition one, negative one and positive one is condition two, negative, or sorry, positive one and negative one is condition three, and then positive one, positive one is condition four. Now what we also see is that our subject go from one to 50 in condition one, and then starts over and one to 50 in condition two, and then so forth. So what we see is our factor one and two is numeric and our subject is interval, but what we want is we want them as factors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go reg data column two because that is our factor one equals as factor reg data two. We're gonna do this for column three and four as well. And there we go, now they're all factors. So now let's do linear mixed effect modeling. What we're gonna use is the LMER function from the LME4 package. So let's get that now. And then we're also gonna use this LMER test because it's gonna give us p-values. The LMER function doesn't naturally give us p-values and that might be what you want. But if you do want p-values, you're gonna to have to use this LMER test one as well. Great, so now what we need is reg results equals LMER. And first thing we put in here is scores, which is our Y variable. Then we could put factor one plus factor two. And next we're gonna add our random effects, which is telling it that we're using a repeated measures design. We're gonna do that using one vertical bar subject. So we're using the subject ID. And finally, what we need to do is add our data frame in there, so reg data. So we have factor one, factor two, and then our subject ID as our random effect. So these are fixed effects, and this is our random effect. 
Now, what you'll notice here is I don't have an interaction. And if we do this, we have a Nova reg results. A warning popped up, but uh, I'm using fake data. So I'm not gonna talk about the warnings uh, here. Um, but if we do this, what we see is we have factor one and factor two, but no interaction. So we can do one of two things. We can either add factor one times factor two, and that's gonna give us our interaction effect as well. Or we can just circumvent the factor one plus factor two, because if you use an interaction, it automatically adds the main effects in, has a shortcut. So what we get here is our effects. And you'll also notice that it's actually a type three sums squared, where in other videos, we've had to actually force our LM function to use type three sums squared, but this one does it automatically, which is great. If you don't know what type three sums squared is and why we're using it, um, it's important, so do look it up. So what we have here is our sums squared, our mean squared, our degrees of freedom for our numerator, for our denominator, our F values, and then our P values. So we have a significant factor one, a significant factor two, and a significant interaction. We can write this out easily as F, so we're just gonna do the first main effect here, one comma 196, which is our two degrees of freedom, equals 6,304.39, comma, p is less than 0.0001. You could do the same thing for the other three as well. 